Six eleven now here on this Monday morning. Welcome back. This year's shipping season got underway just about three weeks mm -hmm. ago, and at the heart of it is the Pollock in Sault Ste. Marie, which is entering its 55th year of service, five years older than the 50-year lifespan for which it was designed. And Peter, you recently took a trip that opened your eyes to the massive operation down at the Sioux Locks. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, that's right, Paul. I was there just a few weeks back when they were getting ready to open for the season, but I also got the behind-the-scenes tour of a multi-year, multi-billion dollar construction project aimed at ensuring nothing ever disrupts the flow of commodities through Sault Ste. Marie and the Lower Great Lakes. Here's a look. One of the biggest fears among the Army Corps of Engineers is the Polak breaking down during the shipping season. The Polak, which is one of two working locks in Sault Ste. Marie, is the only lock meant to handle larger commercial traffic. often carrying iron ore from the Upper Great Lakes. Rachel Miller is a supervisory civil engineer with the Sioux Locks. She says a Pollock breakdown would have a massive ripple effect down the supply chain. If the Pollock was, was not operational, uh, presumably during the shipping season, um, it could potentially back up the, the vessel traffic and prevent the ability to move taconite uh, from the mines on the upper Great Lakes to the, to the lower Great Lakes, uh, which would ca cause ripple effects uh, throughout the supply chain. Nearly 500 miles from Sault Ste. Marie in Chisholm, Kristen Vaki, the executive director of the Iron Mining Association, says a breakdown in the Polak would be a devastating worst-case scenario. That relationship between our iron mines and the Sioux Locks and the shipping industry is absolutely critical. We need a way to get those pellets to the steel mills so that we can make the steel that we all use in our everyday lives. And so that relationship is impactful not only to iron mining, not only to steel making, but to the Sioux Locks and the shipping industry as well. Vaki says the economic impact of iron mining in Minnesota is enormous and a hiccup on the Sioux Locks would be costly. Right. Annually, an estimated $4 billion goes to the state of Minnesota um, in economic impact because of iron mining. But then we also talk about the jobs, uh, direct and indirect jobs. We're talking around 12,000. So that's the folks who actually work at the mines and then also all of the vendor supplier industries. The impact is vast. With that much money and that many jobs on the line, the mission of adding a third lock in Sault Ste. Marie has garnered support from Northland lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar says that is the reason the federal government has invested heavily in adding a third lock. But we put hundreds of million dollars into building that second lock. It's critical for the northern Minnesota economy uh, that we keep the locks updated. On the other side of the aisle, Republican Pete Stauber of Minnesota's 8th Congressional District agrees that the economic impact would be devastating, but so would the national security implications. The taconite that's mined uh, from the Iron Range makes over 80% of this nation's steel, and steel making is a critical national security issue, and so we must maintain the ability to get the, the taconite down to uh, the lower Great Lakes in order to uh, have it processed and, and melted into metal. <laughs> Back in Sault Ste. Marie, they are hard at work to ensure that worst-case scenario doesn't become a reality, building a second pose-sized lock, 1,200 feet long, 110 feet wide, and 32 feet deep, all in the footprint of a retired lock called the Sabin Lock. Here at the Sabin Lock, they'll expand this wall by 30 feet to allow for additional commercial traffic between Lake Superior and Lake Huron. <laughs> Right now, work is underway to dam the entrance of the Sabin Lock, so crews have a dry environment to work in as the warmer summer months arrive. Meanwhile, crews are working around the entrance of the lock on both the Lake Huron and Lake Superior sides to deepen the entrance to accommodate the passage of larger vessels. Miller says the name of the game is safety as work really begins to accelerate this summer. It's also a very old site, so there's 
Lots of hazardous materials around here. Uh, the contractor has already conducted an assessment of those materials, and a big part of the work this summer is going to be safely abating those materials, removing them, and demolishing those structures. Just simply incredible down there to really get the perspective of what this one big piece of infrastructure means, not only to the economy of the Iron Range, the Midwest, but really the nation as a whole and our reliance on one lock that's already above its 50-year lifespan. Yeah, quite a, an operation there. So this new lock, when is it expected to be expected up Expected to ready? open in 2030. Work is underway right now. I mean, they have a lot of work to do still. So the Sabin lock is the one lock they're expanding. In order to expand it, they actually need to destroy and basically fill in another old retired lock, and they're going to keep on expanding it, and then hopefully work should be done by 2030. Really fascinating. All right, Peter, great job. Thank yes. you.